Matt Cowdery still with us, as is Nicole Livingston. And Nick, it's going to be a, a tight one. Bronte Barrett, I guess, starts as the favourite here. We had Melissa Gorman up with us the other day. She's also in the mix. Yeah, Melissa's looking forward to racing this event. The first of the time finals that you're seeing now was swum uh, yesterday morning, which is when we had Mel come up and have a chat to us. This is now the second of the time finals of the 800 freestyle. So thankfully in this event, they didn't have to swim heats and finals. The condensed program allowed them not to have to do that, Matt. They will have to do it, however, when they get to Rome. That's right. It can be an advantage to not have to do that. But then again, it can be a downfall as well, not having swum the event uh, earlier in the meet. So it would be interesting to see how these girls take out the race. So there's Blair Evans in three. We saw Jessica Ashwood first. Now this is your roughie, isn't it, Blair This Evans? is. Blair swam a great 200 metre freestyle a couple of nights ago in the B final, won it in a 159 double O, which was very, very fast. So uh, I think she has a good chance. Coached by Matt McGee out at City of Perth. Who could forget Bronte Barrett, part of that four by two freestyle gold medal win in Beijing. And here's the smiling Melissa Gorman. <laughs> we know Melissa will have the endurance, that's for sure, a 10K open water specialist. And she admitted to us yesterday in the commentary that she shared with us that she doesn't have the same turn of speed as Bronte, so she really has to try and counter that. Lauren Selwood, another up-and-comer. Yeah, Lauren was third at the last trials in 2008, which were an Olympic selection. Here's Belinda Bennett. Kelly Marquini, coached by the 1,500-metre champion Guru. coach, <laughs> Dennis Cottrell. Yeah, so she would have some work under her belt, Kelly Marquini. She was part of that relay that won the other night, breaking the Australian club record. Another one that's wide open. Last year's winner, of course, Kylie Palmer is injured. Longest race we've seen so far of the Australian Swimming Championships for 2009 is the women's 800 metre freestyle final. And they're away with Melissa Gorman making a pretty good start in lane five. So to Belinda Bennett in lane seven, but it's like splitting hairs. They're all very, very tight. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think the only way that Mel's going to be able to mix it with Bronte is to really take it out fast here. She's going to have to really get out of her comfort zone. And the girl that you were talking about, Blair Evans, is also taking out probably similar tactics for her match. She needs to take it out. She has. She's in first place. 29.08 at the 50 metre mark. I mean, there's a lot of adrenaline when you first start a big race like this, the 800. So a lot of rushing of the stroke. You've got to settle into your stroke and find your rhythm. The first 100 will be quick, and then you need to find where you sit, whether it's a 103 or a 104 for the girls, to pace themselves really nicely. Blair Evans is narrowly leading. Bronte Barrett's moved up, though, alongside her and gone past her and will be in front through the first 100. 1087 for Bronte at the first 100. Evans second, Gorman third. Gorman looks like she's moved over onto that lane rope right next to Bronte Barrett. Obviously looking to stick with her through the early parts of this race. Yeah, it's a nice tactic. I mean, I've been talking all week about the fact that you need to stay in the middle of the lane to be able to make sure you don't get wash or interruption with your stroke. But in something like an 800 freestyle, it's not such a bad thing to move across to the lane rope as long as your arms are clear of it and actually use it to pace yourself with the girl next to you that is swimming a touch faster. She might be forgetting she's in the pool and thinks she's in the open water. <laughs> Go and over give her an elbow or something. Yeah, let's in the hope for Bronte she doesn't do that. <laughs> So it's the three we've been talking about, Evans, Barrett and Gorman, with uh, Evans just slightly behind the other two girls. Gorman. Behind them is Selwood in six, Bennett in seven, and Marquini in eight, and over in lanes two and one is Ashwood in one and Marcelli Sheridan in one. Melissa Gorman won this event in 2006 at the Commonwealth Games selection, so she has some racing credibility. Okay, so... That was around about the 103 high. 10087 was the first 100. So now 20500 for Bronte. And looks like she's getting into her stroke very nicely. Nice high elbows, breathing off to the side. It, it looks as though it's easy. She's actually breathing bilaterally too, which, you know, swimmers probably have a, a preferred side mat, but it's important in a distance event to be able to cover the field. Exactly right. She looks like she's swimming very well at the moment. Turning into that turn first off the wall. And Melissa Gorman's not going away. She's really making an effort to stick with her. 
And same catch drug Blair Evans, no, either. No, same with Blair Evans. So she's made the decision to almost move on to the other side. I'll watch her on the next lap to see whether or not she's actually circling in the lane, which you don't want to do because you'll end up covering a little bit extra distance. Looks like it's a race in three at the moment. We've moved through the 250 mark, coming up to 300, and still it's Bronte Barrett. Moves smoothly in and leads just narrowly. Very tight for second and third with Gorman just ahead of Evans. 104.51 for that 100 for Bronte. You can really see the difference in the uh, stroke between Bronte and Mel Gorman. Mel, obviously, an open water swimmer, doesn't use her legs as much as Bronte does, being a 400 and a 200 metre freestyler. You can see Bronte has a lot more of a kick in the water and Mel Gorman very low with her legs. If anything, Blair Evans has moved up into equal first. And she is circling. She's moved across the lane rope closest to Bronte on this lap going up to the 50 metre mark. We actually have wide up tonight uh, John Rogers, who is Bronte Barrett's coach. We will go to him after the 400 metre mark. He wanted to wait to the 400 just to see where she was at. So uh, this is coming up now to the 400 metre turn with Blair Evans trying to make a move. We've got to remember that Blair is only 17 years of age, so she is obviously looking like she wants to make her move fairly early, and we'll see how that pays off for her. She's gone to half a body length lead as we come up to the 400 metre mark. Barrett, if anything, just slipping slightly back into third place. Gorman in second. I think it's important now as we approach the 400 metre mark for Bronte not to lose touch with these girls. If she is planning on just using her raw speed, that may be a mistake. But let's ask the man that's guided her in all of her career, in, including Olympic gold, and that is John Rogers. John, how are you feeling at the 400 metre mark with Bronte? Well, it's a different period for Bronte going into this 800. OK, we haven't swum a lot of these. And uh, the little kid on the other side's going really well. Uh, I never discount Bronte, okay, because we've still got a fair way to go, so we just, you know, see how we're going. She's I know that she'll be finishing on, but the other kid's looking really strong, the little Blair Evans. She's sitting on a, Bronte's sitting on around the 104. Yeah. Um, is there a particular point in time now where rivals can't hear that you asked her maybe to give it a little bit more of a nudge in terms well, of the pace? Well, no, I said the 400, she had to start moving along, but this kid's gone away really strong. This kid's swung well over in... Uh, in the 10 and the 5k over in uh, the, the open water. Okay, well, we'll keep watching Bronte because at this stage, Blair Evans, our guest commentator, Matt Cowdery, has, has done a great job with picking her. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see who out of the two has the better endurance on the back end. Mel, obviously, a 10k specialist, and uh, Blair has been swimming 10Ks at the junior junior Pan Packs and, and meets that the Australian junior teams go to. So it'll be very interesting to see who out of the two uh, will come home the fastest. And John, not, not such a disappointment if she doesn't make the team in this event because she's obviously racing very well for the 400 freestyle and yeah, uh, she's this, qualified in the 200 in the relay. Cool, this one. To go this before the 400 is, you know... You've got to do it to find it out, though, mate. So thank you for joining us. We'll let you do the, uh, the stroke you. rating for the last uh, 150 Good. metres. Thanks, John. John Rogers there in charge of Bronte Barrett, who's quite a fair distance back now in third place. This is a wonderful struggle for first and second between Blair Evans, who's just 17, and Melissa Gorman, with a bit more experience, 23-year-old from Redcliffe Leagues in Queensland. She's in lane six, but it's Evans first in 6.23.07, so she's got a half a second lead over Gorman in 6.23.61. We should also mention that John Rogers, who just joined us, is actually the coach of Kylie Palmer as well, yeah. the uh, defending champion and finalist in the 800 metre freestyle at the Beijing Games. Well, Blair Evans is starting to pick this up even more so now. She's bringing in a nice six-beat kick. She's still circling, as you would say, yeah, Nick, isn't she? But it's not affecting her. No, not affecting her, although the end result, she could have been a touch quicker had she 